Good morning. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Next Sunday, we will have start the rummage sale week of setting up everything next Sunday. So if you're able to stick around and help set tables up, move some things around, um, I know the team would appreciate that. There's also the soup sale and the bake sale in conjunction with the rummage sale. So please look at the sign-up sheets in the back. Beef, vegetable, chicken, corn, baked goods. If you have questions on maybe what sells better, see Karen Mensch. Judy's pointing at me. So we're looking for veggies, onions, macaroni salad for the workers that are here all week to help set up. The macaroni salad is taken care of. That was signed up. As long as we have two. She's looking for two. So if we need another one, one is taken care of for sure. So if you can do a macaroni salad or any of those things, see Judy after church so we can get those things so we have food here for the workers during the week. There is a brief congregational meeting just to look at the security policy that was um, approved by the consistory that we need to present to the church. I feel like I'm cutting in and out. So that briefly right after church, if everyone could just have a seat at the end of worship. Vacation Bible school's creeping on us here. <laughs> Summer is coming, but um, sign-up sheets are back there. So get kiddos signed up for that. Prime Timers is this week on the 27th at 1230. I'm just trying to see if I missed highlighting anything else. Bible study on Wednesday evening at 630. There will be um, life group downstairs and Sunday school in the back. Bonnie, you'll be down with the kids. I'm looking for Bonnie. I don't... And Bonnie will be downstairs with the kids, so you um, would like, please think about staying for Sunday school. Any other announcements that I've missed? Tammy? And anybody that didn't hear Tammy's announcement there, it's the proceeds from the soup sale and the bake sale. We will dedicate towards the backpack program next spring. We usually have the month of March um, our church takes care of, so um, we'll put it to that. Any other announcements? Okay, we'll begin worship with the ringing of the bell. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we continue in this Easter season, we give thanks to God for the blessings we've received and continue to receive through the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We invite the congregation to rise as you are able as we begin with our call to worship. Come, lift your voices to the Lord who always hears us. Call on the Lord, who bends low to hear us. Call on the name of the Lord, all you people. Listen, Lord, we call on your wonderful name, for you saved us, you raised us, and turned our lives around. Let your name be praised in this congregation. Let us join together in singing, Open the Eyes of My Heart.
we gather in God's holy presence, celebrating the new life that is ours in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. may be seated as we invite the children forward. There you go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. A cookie. I never finished it. And you never finished it. All right. Is it good? What kind is it? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Yeah, I look them with the eyes like is that the kind of the only kind, right? Yeah, and yeah, I saw you up here. That was very nice, and you helped to light the candles today. All right, you didn't make it in time, and that's why you're still eating your cookie, right? All right. So, so I have a question: How did you get here today? Did you walk? Okay, your dad dropped you off. Oh, okay. Did, were you on a bicycle? You were in a car, okay. And how did you get here today? With your mommy. Yeah, yeah. And look out here. Look at all the people who came here today. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is, is this is kind of like another home for us, right? Because we're all part of one big family here. We're all children of God, right? And so some of us are younger, some of us are older, but we're all part of God's family. Oh, do you see the church? Yeah. So is that where you are now? Yeah. So we're all at the church today, and we're all part of God's family. And one of the things that's very special about being part of God's family it's sometimes we get cookies. Right? Yeah. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, but another thing is we get to sing together. And you were up here singing with mommy, weren't you? Yeah. We get to sing together. Did you? Oh, right. Is that your favorite one? That's pretty good. Well, thank them. They did a really good job. You know, and the other thing is. You know, we have some special music today, and not to be confused, but we have two Emilies here with us today. We have two Emilies. So back there's an Emily, and back there's an Emily. Uh, and so that's pretty special too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And another thing that we get to do together as the church, as this family, is we get to pray together, right? Do you say prayers at other times? Do you say prayers at home sometimes? When the lights go out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I have to say, one of my favorite prayers years ago is one of my confirmation students, when they were being confirmed, we had this thing, is we asked all the students, you know, will they continue to come to church, and will they follow God's ways? And they were supposed to say, I will with God's help. And the one confirmation student kind of forgot what she was supposed to say, 
And, and with a kind of embarrassed voice, she goes, help me, God! <laughs> Which is probably the best prayer of all, isn't it? Because God always gives us that help. Good. Now, another prayer that Jesus taught us was the Lord's Prayer. So we want to help the congregation lead the Lord's Prayer? Okay. It's, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Want to go get the basket? There's all kinds of things in there today. There you go. Thank you. Hear the word of God in our first scripture reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 116, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of Sheol laid, me hold, laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in, his, in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst. O oh Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Here ends our first reading. Hear the word of God in our second scripture reading from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or defect. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages 
for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring words of God. Here ends today's scripture reading. May God add his blessings to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy word. Oh. 
No other name can save me. No other name can restore. No other name can heal my heart. No other name but yours. No other name can save me. No other name can restore. No other name can heal my heart. No other name but yours There is none like you You alone are worthy of all honor and praise There's no other name There is none like you No other Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you are holy. You, you have revealed your holiness as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you have called us to join into your holiness to be the people of God, sisters and brothers in Christ. Your holiness you have offered to us in the abundance of your creation the abundance of your gifts poured out in creation and calling us and breathing into us life and life everlasting. We offer now these gifts in return as we celebrate the holiness that you have given to us that we may share the good news, walk in the ways of Jesus and be empowered by your Holy Spirit. May we continue to use our gifts to further the gospel, to reach all people in all places in all times, that we might all celebrate the fullness of life that is ours in Christ Jesus. In his holy name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? And they replied, Well, the th things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. 
Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As he came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has indeed risen, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you imagine what the conversation was like when Cleopas and his friend got back to Jerusalem and they met up with the other 11? I can imagine the other 11 said, Cleopas, where were you? And Cleopas would say, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. When we were walking along, We met up with this guy. We didn't know who he was. And we kind of told him about all the events that were going on in Jerusalem three days ago. And we didn't know who he was. But he engaged us in conversation. And in this conversation, he started to teach us. Teach us about things that we should have known that was already appeared in Scripture. And he was teaching us things about what God's up to in the here and now. And then just like that, he was ready to move on. But it was dark and, you know, the day's about over. And so we invited him to stay with us. And we ate. We ate together. And in that breaking of the bread, we could see who he really was. So they go back. And they tell. And so, what happens between Emmaus and Dreisbach? What happens on that long road, seven miles outside of Jerusalem, to 4,700 miles to Dreisbach? What happens? What do we say when we are out on the road, where we're out and about. And when we get home, what do we say? What have we experienced? And how do we talk about it? When we're out and about, do we reflect upon Scripture? Do we reflect upon what God has done and continues to do for us in Christ Jesus? When we're out and about, do we recognize the presence of the risen Jesus? Do we feel the power of the Holy Spirit? How do we measure what life is like when we're out and about? When we're out on the road, so to speak. When I was growing up in Hanover, It was one of those times when you could kind of walk anywhere in town and it was okay. Except there was little, there was one part of Hanover that we were not to walk into, especially after dark, and it was Word Park. Because sometimes some unsavory things would happen in Word Park. So we were told not to go through Word Park. If you had to go around Frederick Street to Baltimore Street, you had to do that, but don't go through a word. 
In Luke's Gospel, there are two particular roads that are referred to. The road that we heard today, the road to Emmaus, or the road from Emmaus, and the road to Jericho. I want you to imagine that the road to Jericho is somewhere between the road to Emmaus and the road to Dreisbach. Because that's the reality that we find ourselves in today. Luke's Gospel wants us to understand that that road from Emmaus to Jerusalem during the time of Jesus' appearance to Cleopas and his friend was a road that was probably well-traveled. It was a safe road. It was a road to engage in conversation. It was a road in which you might meet up with some people you haven't seen in a long while. It would also be a road, as we hear in today's gospel, a road of surprise. Just when you thought the Messiah wasn't there, all of a sudden, he is there. And this is a very good story, this road to Emmaus. We even have churches today that have conversations about the road to Emmaus. But we've been engaged in a very different week. We're engaged in a very different time than 2,000 years ago on the road to Emmaus. And I liken it that the life that we are living now is more like the road to Jericho. Now I want you to think about what that road to Jericho was like. There was a guy traveling on this road to Jericho, and all of a sudden, he's beaten up. And he's left to be half dead. And then, when you know it, because we want good stories, right? A priest comes by. A priest, a churchgoer, comes by. And what does he do? He looks at the person beaten, left half dead, and he walks right by. Walks right by. But the story's not over, because then there's a Levite come by, another good person. And you certainly would expect him to help. And the Levite walks by. And then as the story goes, there comes a Samaritan. Now, we are ready to throw up our hands, because we know the Samaritan's not going to stop and help, is he? We'll leave that story unfinished for the time being. Because right now, when we go out and about in this world, it seems like we're on the Jericho Road. A six-year-old girl's out playing in her driveway, dribbling a basketball, and the basketball rolls over into her neighbor's yard. And before she can actually go and retrieve it, the neighbor comes out and shoots at her. Hits her. And her father jumps in so she doesn't get shot anymore. And he gets shot. That's the Jericho Road that we live in right now. And before we get to the road from Emmaus back to Dreisbach, we have to be honest about what's going on in this world. When a six-year-old girl can get shot just because a basketball rolls into a neighbor's yard. And then, four girls who are training for a big cheerleading thing that was going to happen this week. Had spent hours in the gym training for this. They're in a rental car because they're not in their usual place. They're in a rental car. They stop at a grocery store to get something to eat. And 
the driver of that car coming out of the grocery store mistakenly gets into another car. And she realizes that there's someone in the passenger seat that's not one of her friends. And she immediately gets out and tries to apologize. And the moment she opens her car door to step in, this guy shoots her. We have another 16-year-old talented musician who is asked by his parents, can you go up and pick up your siblings because they're visiting another house? And they're on 115th Street, the address. Put it in your GPS. He puts it in his GPS. And before he kind of looks at it, it comes out not 115th Street, but 115th Terrace. He goes up and knocks on the door. And before he can even say anything, he is shot. That's the road to Jericho. And before we get comfortable in our road to Emmaus, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of world are we living in? How will we kind of have the courage to go out and about anymore? We're looking around today. We're looking at each other. And some of you just became a new great-grandmother and new grandparents. And we have our children and our grandchildren with us. And we used to think, we used to think, on that kind of imaginary road from Emmaus to dry spot that we could send our kids to school and they're going to be okay. You can, we could send our kids to the mom and pop store down the street and they're going to be okay. But that's not true anymore. And before we get all comfortable talking about the risen Jesus, we need to ask, have we been talking about the risen Jesus in the right ways in the here and now? Because somehow, the world got turned more into a Jericho road than the Emmaus road. And that should make us all squirm in our seats. That should make us all a bit uncomfortable. Now, I know years ago, on a visit back to Hanover, I can recall my mom would say, well, it's never going to happen in Hanover. Well, it did. It did, and it was shocking. Maybe we will want to say, or hopefully would say, that... Uh, it's not going to happen in Union County. Or maybe it's not going to happen in our section of Dolphin County. But it does. And we as the church have some responsibility to at least address the matter that is before us. Now we'll get back to the story of Jericho. We already had the priest go by. We already have the Levite guy. And then who shows up? A Samaritan guy. Now the people back then didn't think that Samaritans could be trusted to do anything good. But the Samaritan, he stops by. The person who's left half dead. I want you to picture that. He stops by and he gives him aid. And not only does he give him aid, he puts him on his mount and takes him to an inn so that he can be further cared for. 
when Sandy was reading the lessons from Psalms and First Peter, we hear kind of time and time again, not only what kind of people God has made us, but we also hear what kind of people we are called to be, particularly in tough times. The writer of 1 Peter is writing to the early church that was facing some persecution, some very difficult times. But also the encouragement not to just hide, not to run away, but to address what is going on. This morning, we are at Dreisbach Church. We've heard some wonderful music that has uplifted us, to be sure. And we want that to resonate with us as we continue our journey. Because on our journey from Emmaus to Dreisbach, we're going to have to pass by Jericho. And we're going to pass by all those Jerichos that are part of our live lives today. And it's uneasy. It's uneasy. And we have to ask ourselves, what can we do? What can we do? We have to look at each other. We have to feel the pain. But we have to also know that we can recognize the presence of the risen Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit because God doesn't want us to journey alone. God doesn't want us to walk through those dark places alone. God will continue to teach us continue to direct us, and continue to empower us not to bury our head in the sand, but to address what's going on in our world. We also thought for a long, long time that our sanctuaries, the very word sanctuary, means a place of peace, a place of safety. And in some sanctuaries, that has not proven to be true in several years. The church that I served on the north side of Pittsburgh wasn't very far from the synagogue in which people were gunned down. Because some guy had heard on TV that Jews are the problem of this world. You see, we always want to at least attempt to figure out things, what's going on. And unfortunately, some people want to scapegoat the problem. And blame it on the Jews. Or blame it on people with skin a shade darker than yours. Or even blame it on a six-year-old girl who's dribbled, dribbling a basketball in her driveway. The blame has to stop. And the accountability has to begin with us. Because as long as we stay quiet, or as long as we start blaming somebody else, the road from Emmaus to Dreisbach will continue to travel through Jericho. And what will we say? Will we say it's not our problem? It's theirs? Well, we say, we didn't do anything.
Or will the risen Jesus make his presence known to us in such a way that we will be able to look to our church and look to our communities and look throughout the world? And in the breaking of bread, truly recognize that God is with us. The challenge is before us. And like it or not, or not, the challenge will not go away, even if we want it to go away. The problem is here to stay, unless we are willing to do something about it. And it begins, it begins with recognizing that God chooses to be with us. God chooses to love us. God chooses to empower us, but to empower us in the way that love will win out. Amen. Today, as we gather together, we are reminded first and foremost how much God loves us, how much God cares for us, how much God chooses to bring the way of life and life everlasting upon us. It is a time when we share together that we are indeed sisters and brothers in Christ. It is time to share our prayers and concerns and our joys. Uh, one of the joys that we have is Bethany uh, uh, gave birth to Margo Ella. Margaret Ella. Margaret Ella. Uh, and uh, they're doing pretty well. Uh, the baby's having some problem with some jaundice, so she was under the lamp last night. Um, and Bethany is a bit sore, but we keep them all in our prayers. Uh, Ruth and Mike ventured there, and uh, Ruth uh, had some difficulty uh, making it through into the hospital door and fell, and, and so has some broken ribs. Uh, so we want to keep Ruth in our prayers as well, but we again we want to rejoice in that uh, we were warned about all these babies coming in March and April, and now they're they're here. So again, we want to rejoice. Uh, other joys and concerns to share before the congregation. Yes. When Robert came through the door, he's a big baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and you were down yesterday. Good. Very good. Other joys and concerns? Then let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, for your blessings, for the abundance of love that you have poured out upon us. We give you thanks that you have drawn us into your holiness to be a people of peace, a people of love, to express our unity as one people in God. For we have one Lord and one baptism and one hope. We give you thanks for revealing yourself to us on the road to Emmaus, in the breaking of bread, in the conversations about Scripture and how you would have us live today. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the many ways 
that you reveal yourself through the gift of the church, through its ministry and mission, through the children of God, sisters and brothers in Christ. We give you thanks that you call us to go about sharing the good news, walking in your ways. To confront danger where it might be. To not hide, but to go out and be about. And find ways to bring hope and life to all. We give you thanks, gracious Lord, for new birth, for new life. We rejoice in those gifts. And help us to raise our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to know of your love, of your steadfast care. Help us to turn this world into a safe place for all. We also give you thanks that you bring your healing and loving presence upon those who are broken of body, spirit, and relationship. We ask that your healing presence would be with those whom we name before you. Ken and Pat, Linda, Marissa, Kristen, Keith, Charlotte, Ruth, Ethel, Tony, Mel, and all others whom we name before you now. May they feel your healing presence and touch, and may they be surrounded with caregivers and loved ones. We will continue to provide comfort and care. And during this Easter season, we are truly reminded of the power of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To know that death has lost its sting. To know that you favor life over all that can go wrong. This morning, we pray for the family and friends of Mary Alice and all those who have entered into your eternal kingdom. And they enable and empower each and every one of us to live by the promise of the resurrection, the promise of life and life everlasting, and the promise of that you will continue to make your presence known to us for each breath that we take. Continually surround us and guide us. Guide us into the ways in which you choose to redeem the world. Guide us in the ways that we can comfort one another and guide us in the ways in which we may celebrate the love that you have shown to us in Christ Jesus. In all these things, we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who overcame death on the cross so that we might live and live in the abundance of your eternal promise. Amen. Let us join together in singing, Jesus, the very thought of you. Sweeter far. 
who were bringing even infants to Jesus that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they sternly ordered them not to do it. But Jesus called for them and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter. 